Thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, yeah, let's just uh, dive right into it. There you go. So quantum adversaries can break uh, RSA. And indeed, uh, an adversary that has, given ac that it has access to a large scale quantum computer uh, can use the Schwarz algorithm to break uh, a couple of most widely used uh, public key crypto systems. And the question that this fact pose, uh, poses might be, are there quantum attacks uh, breaking symmetric crypto systems? And uh, yeah, the answer is yes. And this is uh, uh, indeed the, uh, the superposition attack by Kaplan and others and uh, Santoli and Schaffner. Um, and those attacks work in, uh, in the so-called Q2 model. Um, so this means that we give the adversary quantum access to the, uh, to the function, maybe uh, also keyed uh, function. So this uh, gives her more power than the usual post-quantum model. Mm. And this will be the, the, the model that we uh, are in uh, this talk. Um, and we present a scheme that is secure against uh, those superposition attacks, so uh, in the stronger model. Uh, so first I will, introduce, I will talk about the, the attack and somehow um, give you the, the gist of it. Uh, so it uh, attacks, uh, among other things, the CBC construction. So here it is. We have the, um, uh, the CBC uh, takes uh, the internal function, function uh, FK and how you um, evaluate it, you take the message divided into arbit blocks uh, and then XR to the, to the internal state uh, and apply F and repeat uh, until the whole message is uh, analyzed. And uh, the security notion that we uh, aim, at, aim here at is the PRF security. So we want for a random key uh, uh, for the construction to be indistinguishable, uh, computationally indistinguishable from a random function. Mm, in the model where we give the adversary, again, uh, superposition uh, access to the whole thing. So uh, as you have seen on the previous talks, the uh, adversary can prepare a superposition of messages uh, and the second register, she gets um, yeah, the, the outputs of the function. And there is an attack running in linear time in the number of bits uh, of the internal state that breaks the, uh, breaks the construction, namely uh, the adversary can find a collision uh, that gives the uh, kind of, uh, allows her to easily distinguish from, from a random function. Okay, so this is how the attack works uh, and this is the, uh, our result. So um, if fk is a pseudorandom function secure uh, in the Q2 model, then the sponge construction, similar to the one you've seen before, that uh, I will give more details on it uh, later. Uh, so this is the superposition uh, that the can can, can uh, prepare uh, against the, the function. Uh, okay, then the uh, resulting construction is secure in the, in the Q2 model as well. And this is kind of the, uh, her interaction with the whole construction. Okay, so this is uh, kind of a short version of the, of the result. Um, right, <coughs> so in the following, we'll uh, discuss details uh, of this statement. First, I will give you more, uh, uh, give you the definition of the construction, and you will see how similar it is to the uh, CBC construction, and uh, in the end, we'll discuss kind of why the attack does not work in this case. Mm, then I will restate the, the theorem, giving you more details, uh, and then uh, give you a sketch of the proof that works following the modular structure of the proof by Andreeva and others. Mm, and some of the, the key statement that we need to make is the quantum indistinguishability of random sponges. Uh, so we take the sponge construction, instantiate it with a random function, and we want to so show that this is indistinguishable from a random function. And this is the hard part uh, that is solved by the, by kind of the main lemma of our paper that takes more than half of it, basically. Uh, and there we use the quantum so-called polynomial method by Jandi. And then I will conclude with some, uh, posing some uh, open questions. So the sponge construction, mm, 
differs from CBC by uh, the internal state. So now it consists of two parts, uh, one of R bits and then uh, second part uh, consists of C bits. And when we feed the input into the, the construction, we XOR the R bit blocks only to the first R bits of the state. And the second part is left untouched. Uh, well, until we evaluate the internal function on the whole state. And then we mm, feed the, all the rest of the blocks. Um, and this is called the absorbing phase. So someone will take a sponge and absorb water. And then to uh, get this water out, we squeeze it. Mm, and this is what happens in the squeezing phase. We output the first R bits uh, of the state. Uh, and in this, in this construction, we can actually mm, ask for longer output. So we can output more and more uh, blocks of the, uh, of, well, of the output Z by applying uh, phi again and again. So the most prominent use of this construction uh, is in Ketchak, so the standardized hash function, SHA-3, mm, and others. And somehow the use that is closest to our approach or like our um, result is the uh, Haraka function used in the um, hash based signature scheme Sphinx Plus. Uh, I am pointing this out because Haraka uses uh, this construction with phi being the keyed uh, function. Um, so somehow, okay. I will explain this uh, keying business here a bit more. So this is the same uh, theorem as we seen before with more details. So now I added the deal. So f is a fixed input length uh, pseudorandom function or pseudorandom permutation, securing the Q2 model, where you give this superposition access to this uh, guy. Mm, and the advantage of, of this uh, is epsilon. Uh, and then the resulting keyed internal function sponge, uh, this guy, is a variable input length pseudorandom function, securing the same model mm, with advantage. So epsilon plus Q to the third power over two to C. And the C we call the capacity. Um, this will be important later. And uh, right, coming back to how we key the sponge. So those of you that know the construction and know how, uh, how we key it, this is a very specific way to do it. Because sometimes uh, the internal state is keyed. So basically, instead of starting with all zero string, we uh, put the key there. So we start from a different place or we even put uh, prepend the message with the key. Um, but here we uh, just key the internal functions. Mm, uh, yeah. Okay, so how do we prove this statement? Uh, this is pretty straightforward. So we start with the sponge, with the uh, keyed function. We want to show that it is close mm, to, so computationally indistinguishable, uh, from sponge with a random internal function. So this follows from the definition of FK. Uh, and then we want to go to the random function uh, kind of um, right with the same input output uh, format as, as sponge. Uh, and this is done by indistinguishability. So basically, this is what we call quantum indistinguishability. And this is the hard part, right? Because this follows from the definition. So quantum indistinguishability of a construction sponge is, um, is when no adversary can and distinguish the construction from uh, random oracle. And those phi, is phi here, uh, and g are uniformly and random. Now, um, it's important to know that we give uh, the adversary access only to the whole construction and not the internal function, because this would, bring, uh, this would put us uh, in the realm of indifferentiability that we discussed before. But this is not, we, uh, not what we do. Uh, what we can go only, we can use only this notion um, to prove the statement that the uh, sponge is a PRF. Uh, so, right, classically, for example, the and Andreeva and others paper, this, uh, they use the indifferentiability bound, but it's not necessary. Um, okay, so as I said, this is the main kind of technical statement that we need. Mm. So, to prove this, we're gonna focus on the sponge construction um, with fixed capacity, so this is this guy, uh, versus with capacity going to infinity. 
And so this is part of the construction. So some of this part will be either some fixed uh, value, say 1,024 bits, or are going to infinity, so huge. Mm. So why we do that? Uh, we do that because if c goes to infinity, we can show that this is actually a random function. So basically, mm, if this is infinity, I mean very, very large, uh, going to infinity, then every input to phi is different. So, and phi is, is a random function, and when evaluated on kind of fresh inputs, it will always output a uniformly random output. Mm, so this also, and this will also be the case in the squeezing phase, so all outputs will be just random uh, strings. So this works. Uh, so now we focus on the fixed C, and the uh, mm, important observation that we make is to say that the probability uh, of adversary interacting with the construction is a linear combination of like this, of probabilities uh, that sponge of xi equals yi for two q pairs xi yi. Also for, right, this goes uh, over every possible uh, inputs and outputs. And, uh, and this statement is somewhat, somewhat standard in the mm, well, quantum, mm, well, post-quantum cryptography, say. Um, but we will use this, um, so this is the, sa the, the, uh, the same statement, um, in the following way. So we're gonna focus on this part and say that this is a polynomial of, a small, of small degree in one over two to capacity. And why we do that? Uh, that's because if this is the case, so this part, this probability of uh, two Q input output pairs is a polynomial of small degree, then the whole thing is also a polynomial of small degree. Uh, and this gives us the uh, indistinguishability statement that we aimed at. Mm. And this part is the hard part because we need to analyze these probabilities and you have already seen the picture, but mm, yeah, the construction is not straightforward. So to find this, uh, this polynomial was, was the hard part. Yeah. And okay, maybe one uh, thing more. So kind of uh, if we have those polynomials, then going to the indistinguishability is, uh, is, kind of, uh, is completely outside of the scope of um, cryptography or well, it's just a statement about uh, polynomials. Then we say that two polynomials differ uh, and somehow, yeah. Mm, okay, so again, this is the main lemma. Finding this polynomial and, and also finding the parameter in which uh, it is a polynomial and uh, we, we show that this is one over two to C. Um, and the proof, right, uh, goes by just uh, case distinction and uh, counting number of possibilities. Uh, by that I mean number of possible values inside the construction kind of values of the internal states in those 2Q uh, evaluations. And uh, basically there's nothing quantum going on here. It's just in-depth, uh, very detailed analysis of the probability expression. Um, so this is basically it. So what we have done, uh, we have proven quantum indistinguishability of random sponges. Uh, so this is the technical part and you can use it uh, to write, to know that uh, sponge uh, keyed by keying the internal function is a quantum secure uh, pseudorandom function in this very uh, strong model. Now we did it by uh, direct calculation of the probability. Uh, I didn't say it before, but we also uh, managed to prove the whole statement for uh, f being a pseudorandom a permutation uh, or phi being a random permutation directly. So not going through the PRFPRP uh, switching lemma, but um, looking at the polynomials and kind of uh, generalizing a bit the, the bounds. So this might be of independent interest. Mm, right, and the kind of, uh, now we wanted to also think of why the super boson attack doesn't work. And well, the, the intuition is that, uh, well, because of this 
uh, hidden state. So this part is, uh, the adversary has no access to this part. Mm, and in the CBC, uh, I mean, in the attack against the CBC uh, construction, she prepares a large uh, superposition um, that, that are supposed to interfere uh, in the end to, right, to make the attack work. And this, uh, this interference does not happen if there's a uh, part that she does not control. But yeah, so this is kind of the, maybe a technical explanation and we're looking uh, for something more general, like yeah, uh, more useful for, for other possible attacks in this construction. Mm, right, and the second thing is that we, we think that uh, our uh, result is tight. We don't have the algorithm, but kind of this Q to the third power suggests that just a collision attack um, would suffice. And, and there you go. Um, right, so the main open question is, uh, well, we work hard on the, the proof. Uh, where can we use it? Um, maybe some other construction. But there, we kind of to see this, this polynomial, we need this, uh, this, this part of the state that is hidden from the user. But maybe there are other interesting cases. Mm, we would like to understand better why this superposition attack does not work. Uh, as I said, we have a technical understanding, but not so much uh, high level. Uh, and then, right, uh, what about indifferentiability? So kind of the notion more general uh, and also useful when we talk about uh, hash functions, so not heat objects. And uh, right, so we actually uh, have managed to to do this together with uh, Christian Mayen, Christian Schaffner, and Sebastian Zur. Mm, and we used the technique presented two presentations ago, and actually also the, the uh, one way to hiding lemma by Jan Bainis, uh, Hamburg, and Unruh uh, presented on the previous presentation. So thank you very much. We have a few minutes for questions. In classical uh, cryptanalysis, uh, we sometimes consider uh, related key attacks in which uh, you are allowed to modify the key in a particular way and see what is the effect. Uh, did anyone uh, look in the quantum world at uh, what happened when you are allowed to modify a fixed uh, classical key with a superposition of uh, many, many uh, possible changes uh, simultaneously? So you are doing a related key attack, but in the quantum world. Mm -hmm. mm, I am not sure if someone did it. Um, your techniques, for example, will apply if you look uh, at uh, your construction. Suppose that the key is only the uh, state of the uh, initial register. Right. And now you are allowed to uh, 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 add to the key any yes. superposition of uh, initial states. What will happen to your proofs? Uh, well, so um, while analyzing this, this probability of those two Q uh, input output pairs, um, we have to constrain somehow the uh, kind of at which ones we're looking at. So there we fix the initial state to be zero. So we would just need to say that this is also under the control of the adversary. So mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, we can do this. We have a It would be interesting to yeah, just thanks. expand. Thanks. Initially, you said that you um, cannot like prepend the key, that your analysis is for the kind of dedicated key mode, that the function, the internal function is keyed. But with the indifferentiability result, does it mean that you can do essentially what the sponge initially suggested to building a PRF, that you can just prepend key and that is secure? Does it follow from indifferentiability maybe with uh, subtight bound? Mm, right. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. Uh, so. Mm, if we go through indistinguishability, uh, okay, because we, we need to do this uh, step, kind of uh, get rid of the key stuff, and then do uh, then do the, the random kind of indistinguishability part, um, and this somehow gives us the we escape from the right. fact that um, right we don't want we don't want the 
um, the adversary to have uh, access to the internal function. Right. Uh, and in the case you're talking about, this would be natural. Right. But okay, you're so saying it will, so your technique doesn't directly apply, but indirectly through indifferentiability it would be secure. Through indifferentiability, yeah, yeah I, I would say so. But this is completely different proof technique. Right. Yeah. Uh, one question about the, the O2 model. Um, so you're giving uh, superposition access to this primitive and then getting the superposition answer back. Is there a, like a real world or a compositional um, motivation for this, this model? It's a kind of a general question. Right. Um, so one motivation that I've heard about is kind of very um, hardware-y, where you mm -hmm. imagine the hardware with this keys function, um, you know, that you can, that someone has it and mm -hmm. someone is maybe some kind of obfuscated. Well, the key is in there, but not really accessible. Mm -hmm. And you can yeah, um, cool, hold it down and make it quantum. But uh, kind of the, more, the most real world is the post-quantum model, uh, right? And, yeah. uh, we have maybe one or two more minutes for questions. All right, let's thank you on again.